podcast is about mast cells and what happens when mast cells aren't doing everything that they're supposed to be doing correctly. So Dr. G, what is mast cell disease? So mast cell disease is a general term used for diseases that affect the mast cell. So these diseases can be um, caused by an abnormal amount of and or overly active mast cells. So for any cell in our body, we want them there, but only in certain amounts and functioning properly. So if we have too many that um, are present or if they're being overly active and not responding the way that we want them to, that will all cause problems in the way that we normally want these cells to function. What happens if there aren't enough or mast cells aren't functioning properly? With mast cells, we're actually not, there aren't any conditions that there aren't enough or not functioning properly that we know about at this point. And so what we're really dealing with is too much activation and too many of them being present in certain disorders. Okay. So then today, what are we going to be talking about when we talk about mast cell disease? Which conditions or which diseases? There are three forms of mast cell disease. So mastocytosis, mast cell activation syndrome, and then something called hereditary alpha tryptosemia. So I'm going to break each of these down and then we'll repeat everything for everyone. So, cause it's going to be a lot of information, but basically mastocytosis means that there's extra mast cells that are being produced by the body. And then there is essential infiltration of the skin or other tissues and organs with mast cells that shouldn't be there. So all of the connective tissues where these are normally present, it's there's just too many. There's more than there should be. And that means that when they get activated, there are more of them to actually get activated, which means that more chemicals are being released and then more of everything else that happens after is happening. So more inflammation, more histamine, all of that stuff, all of those downward effects. There's just a ton of kids that are coming into the picture that shouldn't be, <laughs> essentially. Mast cell activation syndrome is where there's an increased and inappropriate activation of mast cells. So the number is the same, but when they get activated, they're just uh, activating for no reason most of the time, and they're not working normally. And so you're getting the release of this chemical without having that stick and child that initially hits the pinata actually doing that. The mast cell is just kind of by itself deciding to break open. So the pinata is just deciding to break open on its own and then releasing all of those chemicals. In hereditary alpha tryptosemia, there is a genetic mutation that leads to an overproduction of alpha tryptase, which is actually a protein that's released by mast cells. So when mast cells degranulate, like we discussed earlier with histamine, they release tryptase also. And in this disease, the mast cells have too much of this chemical. So when the mast cell gets activated, then the tryptase is in abundance. So, you know, all these chemicals that are released, there's a fine kind of balance to which ones are released when the mast cell is degranulates. And in this case, there's just too much of one of these chemicals and that can cause problems too. That was a lot of information, like you said it would be. I think using your pinata analogy has been really helpful. Do you think, or I'm not going to give you the option. I'm going to summarize everything. Let's see if I can remember. And then if I can remember, I would assume that the audience also can remember what everything is. So we started with mastocytosis. And that's basically when there is an excess of mast cells uh, in the connective tissue. And what that means is that if there are too many mast cells, when they get activated, that means you're just going to have way more chemicals than you would normally have released. And so the reaction is just so much bigger. Then we have mast cell activation syndrome. And that's when the mast cells degranulate, but without a trigger. So like you mentioned, the pinata just kind of explodes open while it's hanging off of the tree or something. 
and uh, you don't exactly know why it did that. The third one you mentioned was hereditary alpha tryptosemia, and that's caused by a mutation which leads to the overproduction of the protein alpha tryptase, and that protein is found inside the mast cell. So if I was to use the piñata analogy, it's like you hit the piñata, it opens, all of the candies come out, and you realize that there are way too many of one particular candy and it is not equally spread out the way you normally want it to be. Is that right, Dr. G? Did I remember all three? So yeah, Courtney, that's exactly right. I think you summarized it really well, and I think it's always good to hear it again. So those are the three large buckets of mast cell disease. And then specifically for mastocytosis, there is a varying degree of severity. And because of that varying degree of severity, they actually act like totally different disease states. And so in 2008, the WHO actually classified mastocytosis into seven different categories because of all the differences that they were finding. There's cutaneous mastocytosis, there's indolent systemic mastocytosis, there's smoldering systemic mastocytosis, there's systemic mastocytosis with non-associated hematologic non-mast cell disease, then there's aggressive systemic mastocytosis, then there's mast cell leukemia, then there's mast cell sarcoma, and then there's extracutaneous mastocytoma. So that's a lot of different terms, and we're not going to go into all of them. And it's basically to remember that there's lots of different types of mastocytosis. So if you Google the term mastocytosis, it might make you scared because if you've just newly been diagnosed with it and you're not completely aware of which form you have, then you could start going into a rabbit hole and looking at the more severe types of disease and then getting really worried. So it's just really important to know that there are a lot of different types. Some of them are more severe and some of them are less severe. Another way to kind of categorize them is that there's cutaneous mastocytosis, and this is the most common type of mastocytosis, and cutaneous means that it's really limited to the skin, whereas in systemic mastocytosis, the internal organs are involved. And then systemic mastocytosis is the type of mastocytosis that affects the bone marrow and other organs, like the liver, spleen, lymph nodes, and it can cause most more serious symptoms than cutaneous mastocytosis. And then mastocytosis with an associated hematologic disorder, this type of mastocytosis is associated with other hematologic disorders like leukemia and like lymphoma. So again, it's just important to remember that there's lots of different categories. So if you're doing like a search after you get done with your doctor's appointment, I, we just don't want you to be worried. Do we know what causes mast cell disease? So for mastocytosis, more than 90% of patients with systemic mastocytosis have a mutation in something called the KIT gene. So the KIT gene provides instructions for producing a protein called KIT, which is spelled K-I-T, just for anyone who might want to be looking it up while we're talking about it. So KIT is a receptor that's found on the surface of mast cells. And this receptor plays a crucial role in the regulation of mast cell growth and function. So in mastocytosis, a genetic mutation affecting the KIT gene causes the KIT receptor to become overactive. And so then the overactivity of the receptor signals the mast cells to grow and divide uncontrollably, which results in an increased number of mast cells accumulating all over the body, as we discussed in mastocytosis. So the mutated gene results in a receptor that, func that doesn't function correctly, and that mutated kit receptor essentially is found in a large proportion of mast cells in individuals with mast mastocytosis. Okay, so that was a lot of information and I took some notes. So let me see if I can simplify this. First, I think we need to recall some basic science. And the basic science is that the role of a gene is to make a protein. Once we understand that, we can talk about the kit protein. 
which is the one that's impacted. And the KIT protein is a receptor found on the mast cell. And this receptor is responsible for the growth and development of mast cells. So when there's a mutation on the KIT gene, there's then a mutation that's impacting the receptor. And the receptor is becoming overactive. And when you have an overactive receptor that is responsible for the production and growth of mast cells, you then have an overproduction of mast cells. Perfect. Yep. That's exactly it. And that was a great summary and because, you know, it is very complicated, some of this stuff. And so I just want to, I'm really glad that you summarized it. And as usual, you figured it out perfectly. And so hopefully that extra summary really helps everyone that's listening. We have for mastocytosis and then for mast cell activation syndrome, it's not the kit gene. And we actually don't know what causes that disorder or activation syndrome. For hereditary alpha tryptosemia, it is a mutation in a different gene. And that gene is called TPSAB1, which codes for alpha tryptase. And that leads to an increased amount of alpha tryptase in mast cells. So now that you've kind of explained genes and how those work, so now we get it that this other disorder has a different gene that's mutated, and that causes the increase in the mast cells for that particular chemical, alpha tryptase. Okay. Thank you, Dr. G. Yeah. At first here, it sounds like it makes sense. And then when you try to say it out loud, it makes zero sense because you're like, oh, okay, it sounded really good. But actually, now that I'm trying to put it into my own words, I have no idea what's going on. So thank you for letting me take a second there and figure it out. Are mast cells found in our blood or are they in other places in our body that I just don't know about? Yeah. So that's a great question. So actually mature mast cells, which means that mast cells that would actually work and do something and can get activated are actually not circulating in the blood. They're actually found in what we call connective tissues. So connective tissue is that tough, often fibrous tissue that basically binds the body structures together. And it provides support and elasticity to lots of different parts of our body. And it's present in almost every organ. So it forms a large part of the skin, tendons, joints, ligaments, blood vessels, and muscles. We need white blood cells all over the body so that our body is able to protect itself. And this is just another example of how cells can be found in connective tissues. And one of those cells is the mature mast cell. 